Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome, warm welcome, especially here in Florida, beautiful sunshine. My name is Thierry, also known as Superlight. I'm here to give a lecture about water. What is water, about detoxification. I want to thank Chandel for giving us this space here tonight. Uh, we are the chiropractor's office of Coconut Creek on 440 West Sample, um, and she's opening this uh, new juice bar, all organic, called Tropical Nutrition Spot. Thank you, Chandel, and thank you everyone for being here. You could have been somewhere else watching your show on TV or doing something, but you decided to come here. Uh, so I respect that and I thank you for uh, your courage and the determination to learn something that uh, totally is going to actually change your life. Uh, this information I'm going to about to share with you is certainly going to transform your life because it transformed my life. Uh, I would say about 12 years ago when I decided to Live a, live a different lifestyle, not that I was any thick, sick or anything like that, but I just want to maintain uh, good health. So I dedicated my time into the research on what we made of, what is the human body made of, and how to maintain it. Because we know how to take care of our cars, we know how to check the pressure of the tires and the oil and all that before we go on a trip, but we don't really know how to maintain our body which is our most important vehicle to be able to transport us into this, this, this beautiful earth. So I see a lot of people being sick and I don't believe in sickness. I don't believe in disease because I believe that God didn't create disease for us. I believe that people create disease for themselves. And when you look at animals, they don't run nose, they don't blow their nose, they don't get sick like we do humans. So I decided to look at nature and to learn about the uh, past uh, evidence and scientific evidence or philosophers or scientists or doctors that have studied about this matter. And uh, for the last eight years, I dedicated some really deep work and find some quite amazing things that they don't teach us at school and they don't teach us anywhere. So my, you know, I dedicated this work into sharing this and I'm recording that, so enjoy the, uh, the lecture. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about is the most important thing, which is water. Uh, the most important thing for us I actually is light. Because you will agree with me, if there will be no light on this planet, there will be no life. Right? There's another thing, because all the planets have the light too, like the moon, but there's no life in it. So there's soil and there's water. Water is the, medi is the mediator for the light. Uh, water is very important for us. We can leave a few minutes. I would think the break records is uh, eight minutes without breathing. Uh, and some people say we can live without water. But that's another thing because our skin absorbs everything. Uh, it's actually the biggest organ that we have. You can stand barefoot on chopped garlic and you will taste garlic within three minutes. So our skin actually absorbs everything. And there's plenty full of air abundant in the atmosphere. So we actually absorb this water. We could live a few days or a week, weeks, without drinking any, a drop of water because we actually absorb this water. But we need to drink water. But there's a certain type of water. There's good water and there's bad water. What is bad water? It's a water that is unstructured, dead. Because guess what? Water is actually a living thing, and water has memory. Water carries information, intelligent, coherent information that is recognized for intelligent, coherent body. See, our body is a quite amazing piece of architecture of nature. It's a bioelectrical machine that functions certain ways. It doesn't really function like a car, like most people believe. Most people believe that they have to eat to get energy. It doesn't work this way. Food actually is only 10 to 15% of our energy source. There's other energy sources that we can utilize, absorb, assimilate, and convert into a valid life force. Like the sun, for example. Sun is food. I highly suggest, and I don't take my word for it, I'm not a doctor or scientist or guru or anything like that. I'm just a regular guy. I have a job, you know, I pay my bills, and I just dedicate my free time instead of watching TV or go dancing and get drunk and stupid. I dedicate my time into learning something that's beneficial for me, but also for the people around me. Because I like to see people happy and smiling and, and healthy. I don't like to see sick people and disease and all that. So 
you know, don't take my word for it. It has a lot to do with a lot of studies that has been done before. Um, this video is going to have some uh, some names of doctors when I refer something. Maybe I don't remember the name of that particular doctor, last name. I have very bad memory, and that's happiness, guys. Bad memory and good health. <laughs> I'm surprised I remember that one. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? I forgot. <laughs> water. So bad water is water that goes through pipes, and all the water we get from bottle, from bottle to tap water, goes through pipes. So just imagine something. Uh, let's say this is a pipe. So the water goes through at 45 degrees angles, which is not found in nature. First of all, there's no straight line in nature. So when water goes through a straight line, it doesn't recognize its environment and becomes stressed, especially when it's small, and especially when it has angles, like 45 degree angles. It's totally unseen in nature. Water is meant to be in circular motion, just like in this vase here. You see I put like a magnet that spin because of a, a computer fan. The magnet spins and makes the water spin create a vortex. If you look at the study of Victor Schobauer in 1930s, um, he's an ambassador of nature, discovered that water is best found and restructure itself in contact with the golden ratio, which is what we see here, the golden ratio. It's a vortex, a swirl. Just imagine you look at the beach and you see the wave crashing into the shore. You see that vortex happening, right? that golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? It's, uh, it's what you find in nature. Uh, just look at, for example, a snail shell. You can picture that. I don't have any with me, but it starts like this and it expands. And that's the house of the snail, right? Well, it, it follows certain patterns, certain geometric patterns that is found in nature. And Leonardo da Vinci, who knew a lot about um, sacred geometry and, and nature, he says that beauty and vitality is given to anyone when they live accordingly with the laws of the universe. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of those principles so you can have some understanding about what we are talking about. If you take a number, let's say number one, and you add it, one and one is two. And you take those two numbers and you add them up, you get three. Then you add the last two numbers, you get five. You take the last two numbers, you get eight. You get 13, 21, etc. When you take this number and you divide it, you come up with a number that's called the golden ratio. It's 1.618, etc. Or you can do like a square, take this angle, flip it right here, and that's the pi number, which is linked to golden ratio too. So what you do is you take a, a square, so one by one, for example, and then you take a two by two, and then a three by three, and then a five by five, and then an eight by eight, etc. And then when you join those figures together, you start from the beginning here, what you get is actually the, the uh, snail shell. That's the golden ratio. So it's quite amazing when you look at nature and you look at the way the nature expresses itself, you can actually recognize some patterns that is linked to everything that we find in nature, even ourselves. You know, we count one to 10, right? There's 10 numbers, actually nine numbers, including zero. So this is one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But ten is one, so that would be zero. Zero to nine. Then you have all the numbers. And you have three. So power of one, two, three. If you multiply those numbers, you get all the numbers. Um, there is something called vortex mathematics, which is linked to all the sacred geometry, those formulas of, uh, of patterns, into the vortex. And there's something called vortex mathematics. When you clean those together, you actually come up with incredible understanding about what nature is all about and how things work in the world. I know it's really deep, but we have to do some cut. I, I kind of <laughs> get a little bit too deep into the science of things, but um, I'm going to step back a little bit more. You know, get back into the beginning. I'm so sorry. So let's say water, when, goes, when water goes through pipes, 
Just imagine um, um, a snake, for example. I think I have a book here. Um, it's the energized water. You're talking about the books over here on the table? No, here it is. All right, this is a great book. It's called The Healing Power of Energized Water. And there's a page here that explains about the stress of water into pipes. And they describe it the same way like a snake, for example, will go into this pipe and be stressed. And it just makes a lot of sense. the diagram. You had the yes. snake through the pipe and the snake was having a hard yes. time because the snake is used to the curvature of its exactly of its body. So as you're forcing it through a structure that's straight, it's not yes. allowing it for much room to have that curvature yeah. that natural. Not only straight straight but also restraining in the restraining size. It, yeah. The snake actually was gonna be stressed and it's the same thing with water. When water goes through small pipes it becomes stressed. So when it comes out and of tap water and goes into bottle of water because all the bottled water, there's no such thing as live water in bottled water. It's impossible. Unless you get it fresh directly from the mountain springs. But all those spring waters they advertise, none of them really comes from springs. There's actually two bottled water out of 188 bottled water that's all in the United States that truly come from the spring. And they actually will tell you in the website the process of how they purify the water and how they convert it, put it into the bottles. All of the other bottles actually don't tell you anything because they use the same process. They use either reverse osmosis, a filtration system, and they put it through pipes and then boil it. You know, so it, there's no such thing as water coming out of mountain springs. Uh, like this one, for example, says 100% natural spring water. That's not true. There's a lot of things that are not true. You know, they use words, but it doesn't mean anything. See, people are blurred with things like. I think there's a propaganda into making people believe, not even with words, but images. Um, when you drive on 95, you see those billboards with watches for sale. You, they always have the same time, 10-10. Anybody seen that? Yeah, look at this one. I'm, I'm just, I just took this from the doctor's office a couple of days ago uh, because it had a lot of watches in it. So I asked the doctor if I can use it for my lecture. He said, yeah, take it, 10-10. They all at 10 o'clock, 10 minutes. Why is that? Well, I guess. Done, done. Because it shows a happy face. See, it's a smiley face. It's, all it's happy. I see. Yeah, so it's unconsciously, you look at the watch and you're like triggered to kind of like it. So it, you know, unconsciously triggers your desire to purchase the watch because it makes you happy. Like the 10 is like a smile or something? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's a smiley face. If it was like this, it would be different. Basically the whole face of the watch and then the, the two little things almost look like, to yeah. me it looks like almost like eyes. Yeah, if the watch was like this, you wouldn't be triggered because it looks kind of happy. It yeah. really does. I, my whole mood just changed right now. I'm just like, that's not a good watch. Isn't it? <laughs> really, I'm yeah. serious. Energy shifted. Exactly. It's all about energy. You know, there's a lot of things about in this world that once you recognize, actually, you have to be able to be consciously aware to be able to recognize those subtle energies around you because everything is very subtle, especially about images and, you know, like TV, for example. TV is nothing else than the duplication of the brain. And that's a very, very malicious way to be able to brainwash people because they are literally listen to another human being in the form of a cubic form, you know, that comes up. But it's, it's a brainwash form of, of manipulation and it's very malicious. So anyway, I tell everybody, stop watching TV, you know? Yes. Watch your good movies or good documentary. I haven't watched television in all the 30 years. Congratulations. Oh, it's, it's I was really sick when I was in my 20s. I was watching the stupid sitcoms. I said, that's it. I <laughs> watch this. Um, I mean, I would watch a documentary once every blue moon, but I do the movies and yeah. stuff like that. For my mind heart purposes, it's great. Books are great. But subliminal messages are everywhere. And especially the media, when it comes to um, what they think is beautiful and what is value, mm -hmm. is very, it's just wrong what they're doing. It's and they destroy women altogether. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, there are people who are uprising and, and bringing the media to its knees and um, showing women the monster behind the media. 
Yeah, because a lot of women go through all kinds of issues because they're trying to measure up to the perfect woman. Yes. You know, or the perfect human being, or right. or trying to measure the value. And you can't do it because watch or nobody's right. perfect. I mean, you know. Um, well, our body is perfect. The body is nature, and what we do is we create imperfection with it by absorbing, consuming the wrong foods that does is not proper for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I educate myself, then I share the knowledge on how to maintain the body properly so it can work efficiently. Mm -hmm. And there's a great book I highly recommend to everyone. This is a great legacy from Professor Arnold Eret, who passed away about 80 years ago. This book is called The Mucusless Diet Healing System. And what it does is it teaches you how the body is made, it's very simple. It's flesh, bone, and, and it's very tissues, very elastic tissues. And by the way, if you stretch an, a rubber band for a long time, it's going to lose its elasticity. It's the same thing with us. Our skin is elastic, so if it grows, it can come back with a long period of time. So basically what, uh, what Professor Eret says is that vitality is the power minus obstruction. So what is the power? The power is the, the life force energy, the place between you and I, because this is really abundant of energy if we know how to utilize it. And that's what we're breathing, the plasma that connects one to another, that is all intergalactic and universal, the plasma that goes into my body and goes out, it goes into your body. That's what connects us all. This is the power, the life force energy, the prana, the the philosopher stone, you know, they, they have different names for it. I call it the ether, right? And obstruction, what is that? It's resistance, something that blocks, right? In the body, that would be the wrong foods. The food that the body cannot digest and assimilate and reject. So it gets stuck somewhere in the body. We call it inflammation. Inflammation is disease. It's like you put a potato juice in your car. What's going to happen? You know, or sugar. It's going to get clogged somewhere. Then your car is going to break. And that's how people get sick, because the body breaks. <laughs> you know, you put the wrong food, it travels into the bloodstream. Uh, it gets clogged somewhere into the veins. I'm talking about excess mucus. Mucus, my friend. Of course we need mucus, because it's, uh, it's something that's lubricant. Uh, it's able for us to, to move, and the body creates that naturally. But the excess mucus that the body doesn't need, and cannot get rid of. Just travel through the body, get stuck somewhere in your veins, you feel a pain. Oh, I'm in pain. Guess what it is? It's inflammation. It's the body signaling you that there's excess mucus there. So you can do so certain things to alleviate, but the first, the first thing you should do is stop eating those food that create excess mucus. Actually, I created a chart, which I'm going to pass around right now. Actually, you can just... Uh, is one for each one of you. You work. This is called. You want to share? Yeah. Okay. This is called the uh, Alchemistic Codex for the evolution of the Aetherian race. Mm. And the first um, chart on the left is called the Berg's Table. So Dr. Berg actually find out that this food that creates mucus and this food that eliminates mucus. So if you had a choice, which one would you go for? Of course, the eliminate. But that makes sense. So you see the line in between that is like the yin and yang sign? Anything above that, that's health. Okay. Anything below that, that's disease. As simple as that. So, you know, you have a choice. I give you the knowledge, then you go home, you do what you want. But my, like personally, my body, I want to stay above that line because I never want to be sick. And last time I was sick was actually, I think it was 10 years ago. I haven't been sick since. No headache, nothing. Because a headache, you know what it is? ADHD, all those, those mental disease. It's nothing else than the compression of gas from the fermentation of toxic food that is accumulated and cannot get rid of the, out of the body. This accumulated waste, especially made from meats, animal meats, that the body cannot digest and assimilate, processed foods, all those things that the body cannot reject, get stuck into a digestive system in the walls and attach itself to it like glue and then it hardens because it, it ferments and it gets stuck there and it, with a long period of time I'm talking about 
15 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Do you see all these guys, they walk around, they look pregnant? That's what it is. It's, a, it's called a mucoid plaque. And it builds up, it goes from 8 inches to 12 foot long. And it's right there. And it's stuck there. It's glued like a, like a magnet into the bowel movement, into the, the digestive system. And there's nothing they can do to get rid of it. Some people, everybody, I believe, everybody in this planet, because our parents didn't know anything. We, we all ate eggs and cheese and meat and dairy products and all that stuff that gets stuck. I'm sure I'm not 100% clean. I did some, a lot of detox and get rid of the, those mucle plaque, but I'm sure I still have some. So I'm always in the process of fasting and detoxing and, and get rid of this, uh, this junk that has been accumulating in my body for years. So, you know, you can't imagine. So there's a very simple way you can get rid of it. Because there's no magic pill or magic water or, you know, all these people that switch into vegan or raw food diet, they say, oh, okay, I'm healthy now. They don't work this way. Because if the toxic mucus plaque is there, it's there. Until they don't get rid of it, they're not going to be healthy. And people spend hundreds of dollars at Whole Foods a month buying all these rich, abundant, organic foods. But guess what? If the body is stuck with all this mucus plaque, the body cannot absorb those nutrients. So it's just a waste of time and money. You understand? We have, if you want to trust your gut, clean them first. <laughs> so the, the, the most uh, effective way to uh, eliminate the mucoid plaque out of your system is actually taught by Dr. Richard Anderson. Uh, he wrote a book and he's actually uh, helping people to get rid of their toxicity. And his formula is this one, it's very simple. You make a shake and you drink it four times a day. And in between you do some herbals or some things like that. Um, there's another way you can actually accelerate that, but uh, we can you know, contact me and I'll share that with you. It, for him it takes about seven to 10 days to drink this shake every day, four or five times a day. Okay, with no consumption of dairy product whatsoever, no consumption of animal meats. Give the chance to the body so it can heal itself, eliminate this mucus plaque. The shake consists of phyllium, bentonite, and some herbs. But mostly phyllium and bentonite. There are some people that add uh, palm tree oil, because palm tree oil works like a lubricant. It, it eases the mucus plaque to actually slide off the body. But what the phyllium does, you, you probably, it's like a powder, it's a, it's, a, it's a fiber. You put a couple scoop into a glass of water, and it thickens like glue. So what you do, you do the shake, you add bentonite. Bentonite has been used, it's like clay, it's been used by Indians for thousands of years. It's very powerful. What it does, it sucks out the parasites. So it dissolves basically the mucus plaque. So the phyllium expands into the, the, the digestive system. The bentonite sucks it out and dissolves it. And then the uh, plant tree oil will actually slide it off. Now, something about palm tree oil is the oragutan, which is a species of monkey that is going extinct because the harvesting of those palm trees. The problem is the consumption of those, those fats and grease, and uh, they use them for soaps, so they use them for candles, they use them for so many uses, and that's the, really the problem. So using a little bit of consumption of palm tree oil flake for your shake, for you to detox, I think it's okay. Just eliminate some of the products as candles and soaps and, and oh, find yeah. other alternatives to kind of compensate. So anyway, this is the uh, first table, the Berg's table. The next table is called the Bovis scale. That was designed by Andre Bovis in 1936. I can't say it well because he was French. <laughs> so anything above that, you see it's life enhancing or well-being. Anything below that is called life depleting or illness. Food itself contains vitality, especially fruits. When you think about a fruit, what a beautiful thing of nature. It's sweet, it's delicate, it's delicious. It falls down to the ground, the seed goes in the soil, boom, it grows a tree. Seed is like nature's orgasm. It's like a very sexual thing that it's so delicious and there's something vibrant about the colors, the smell, the look, the perfume, the everything about the fruit. Fruit is a very high vitality uh, food. And that's why it's so good for you. It also contains restructured water. Like coconut water, you heard about it. The coconut water actually compresses the water to make it this, um, this uh, geometric pattern into the water, like hexagonal shape. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, but the fruits actually 
restructure the water within it. So when you actually eat the fruit, you drink the juice, you drink the water, the restructured water, that's why it's so healthy for you. Not just the fruit, but the water that contains the fruit. Yeah. Not too many people know about that. Now think about the seed. When it germinates, you can take a, a bean, for example, and, and, and germinate it. You put it into the water for overnight, and then for the next two days, you rinse the, the beans, and they actually sprout. Well, that sprout, when it's that, 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 um, that phenomenon of the bean or the seed that germinates and bursts out of life, actually produce a very high level of vitality. And you find sometimes some seed that go up to 450,000 bobies. Andre Bobis say that the equilibrium for us is 6,500 Armstrong. He said that fresh living food is about 7,500. The highest we can find in this dimensional level, because now we talk about the ethereal range, the place of power, anything above 10,000. But the highest we can get is wheatgrass juice. That's why wheatgrass juice is so good for you. But the seed that germinates and sparks into the life go up to 450,000 bobies. You can imagine how powerful that is. And that's what we're looking for. It's food that is rich in vi vitality, that is living. Because after all, we are living beings. So we're not meant to eat dead foods. It just doesn't make sense. To restore and rejuvenate ourselves, we need the vitality of, of living beings, of living forms, that is structured, current, structured from nature which is designed following the principle of the laws of the universe. I'm talking all the patterns of sacred geometry and golden ratio, Fibonacci sequences, and so on. So when you connect with nature, because you are nature, you look everything is, in your body is actually symmetric. You find balance in yourself. You always find balance. That's the way we are. And if we eat properly some balanced food, then we are more balanced ourselves. Any questions about those two scales so far? So everyone, we basically have seen like that we've gone from going to pressure cooking to grilling, and then that steaming was the healthiest way for us. Yeah, to steaming because you don't cook it as much. You yeah. put a little bit of heat, that's vapor, that's gonna reach maybe 120, 140. It's well known that when you cook food above 108 degrees Fahrenheit, you kill all the enzymes which are necessary for the uh, digestion of the food. But you also kill the vitality in the food, and that's what we're looking for, is vitality. You don't kill also the vitamins and all but the... But when, when I cook quinoa, which is the plant protein, yes. I'm boiling it. Is there a better way to... Yeah, you can sprout the quinoa. Soak it overnight, and then rinse it three times a day for two days. And then it'll be soft? It would be sprouted, and it would be s not as soft as if you boil it, but it would be digestible. It would have a tail coming out, and it will be a living foods rather than dead foods. You'd have to find that, good there's another way you can do uh, quinoa, a very efficient way, and it's faster than waiting three days, is hit the water until you bubble it. So that's going to be 160 degrees or so. Shut it off. Shut off the heat. Put the quinoa in it and cover it and let it sit. Just like you'll do rice, you know? Oh. So this way you kind of keep. But I always suggest before you do that, just like the beans, soak them in water overnight before you do that. So mm -hmm. you kind of activate the enzyme, the life force energy within them. Because all the seeds and all the beans, they are in the dormant stage. That's why they can stay in your shells for years. They're not living, they're like semi-living. And when you soak them overnight in water, you activate the life force energy in them. You wake them up. They become babies, and they depend on you, parents, to stay alive. <laughs> so, yeah, so steaming, it would be the best way if you want to, like, make, for example, Brussels sprouts or broccoli, yeah. which is, like, yeah. cruciferous, they're hard to chew. You, you got, like, gymnastic here on your, you know, you want to enjoy the food, too, but you want to enjoy these, these foods. Uh, then cooked food, grilling, and pressure cooking. Pressure cooking would be the, the worst because you actually put so much heat into the food, you destroy everything then you actually eat something that has no nutrition value at all. And you eat, eat, eat all this food, you know, you're still hungry because the body has signals. Um, I'm talk, referring to Forks of a Nice uh, documentary. They explain that very well. Is that when you eat food, especially oily cooked food, uh, there's sensors in the body that says, um, I don't get the nutrients that I need, please eat more. So you eat, 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 eat. That's how people get big, 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 big because they overeat. And they never get satisfied. With plant-based living food like this, 
you know, this is a sunflower pate. It's live sunflowers. I soaked the sunflowers overnight. They're germinated. Sun-dried tomatoes, capers onions, bok choy, tomatoes. It's all good. It's all fresh and living. And it tastes delicious, guys, right? Yeah. Amazing. And this is like a, a cashew, red bell pepper, mezcai, chipotle, curry with, um, with a little bit of, um, uh, what do you call it? I forgot. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and I put some pineapple with cauliflower, um, some celery, tomatoes, onions. Uh, this is delicious too. How did so, you learn how to make the combinations between to complement the flavors? Is it just part of because you're a chef and you? Uh, not because I'm a chef, because I, I practice a lot. Yeah. I always worked in the uh, in the dining industry as a waiter, and I always looked how the chef was cooking. So I was taking that skill and duplicate that at home. Um, I study also culinary in France. So that experience kind of helped me to transition into the vegan lifestyle when I don't heat any food, but I kind of combine aromas. So you're gonna have to be an alchemist too. To be a good chef, you have to know about alchemy. I, all my recipes, I don't use any measure cups or anything like that. I just go by feeling and by, and I put love when I do my food. And you can, I'm sure you feel it like this, it's vibrant and it's, it's yeah. It's the taste of aroma, I think it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. A lot of practice, of course, you know. So, by the way, I had a raw food restaurant uh, a few years ago. I ran it for a couple of years. It was called New Ash Cafe. It was in Parkland, Florida. And, um, oh. yeah, I was actually uh, featured on a local magazine, mm -hmm. see, from farm to table. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about water at the time, too. Like, water is really my expertise because I think it's so important for us. And this is a Fibonacci carafe, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the carafe shape by itself actually raised vitality mm -hmm. just because of its shape to 25,000 bodies. I'm just curious to see yeah. this. So where do it, I, I'm hearing that the water that we take out of the tap is really not healthy. Yeah, water from the tap, okay, for various reasons. First, because when water comes out of, of pipes, it is stressed because it goes through pipes that it doesn't recognize its environment. There's no straight light in nature. And then it goes through 45 degrees angles. They kind of break the patterns of the water that should be in a vortex circular motion. Everything spins in life. And there's no straight light in nature. And by the way, everything spins to the left. I'm talking about electromagnetic energy. Um, no. All the blenders, you have blenders at home? Uh, yes. If you look, what direction do they spin? Counterclockwise. Yeah. All the racetracks. You know, the, the, the car, horse, dogs, all the racetracks spin counterclockwise. If you climb a horse or a bike or a motorcycle, which side do you climb? Always from the left. Your DNA spins to the left. The Earth, we actually spinning counterclockwise. And the Sun, the Earth around the Sun spin counterclockwise. The vortex of the galaxy Milky Way actually spin counterclockwise as well. And the mill manufacturers actually know that. Because sure milk is un undigestible, they make the yogurt spin counterclockwise to make to change the polarity of the electromagnetic field in it. So the, the yogurt can actually be digestible. Otherwise, the body will just reject it right away. You'll vomit it. <laughs> so vitality is power minus obstruction. Obstruction is the wrong food. The food that is not recognized by the body, like uh, red meat, uh, meat from animals. Uh, we're not meant to eat animals. And uh, you can look at the documentaries from uh, Gary Yusofsky, uh, who is, uh, he he's lives in Israel and travels around the world, give, le give lectures from 30 people to 5,000 people. And he's a big advocate about veganism. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because I remember as a very young child, mm -hmm. and the first time that I, I didn't realize that you know, I was eating hamburger or I was eating a cow. Mm -hmm. Well, when I found out that I was eating an animal, I was absolutely revolt revolted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's in us, probably, not yeah. to eat animals. You know, because even as a very young person, it just it, it hit me wrong. It's like, what am I doing? I yes. don't want to eat an animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people have that response. There are some benefits about animals, like, uh, like butter or uh, milk mm -hmm. from cows. But they have to be in spring. They have to, you know, uh, in June, which is the middle of, you know, of the year. That's where you find the best grass, and that's where you, you actually can heal yourself. Uh, from You can actually rebuild tooth decay, where you don't even have to go see a dentist ever in your life if you actually follow certain protocols, like uh, eating butter from a cow that has been um, 
free in nature and hard, you know eating the grass from June. So this you know there's certain things. Um, but as far as milk, as far as I'm concerned, when you go shop for the Helmers uh, glue for students, it has a cow face on it. Why? Because glue is made of casein from milk. And what is casein? It's actually 80% of milk. Casein is, uh, is carcinogenic. Uh, casein is glue. That's what they use for uh, bottle labels and uh, furniture glue from uh, furniture manufacturers. So you can imagine when it enters the body what it does. You drink milk like at night, you wake up in the morning, you <clears throat> right? Because the glue is stuck in there. You can imagine what it does into your veins and your body. It just gets stuck like glue. So you stay away from, from uh, milk, I would say, period. It also contains like HGF1, a growth hormone factor one, which uh, helps a 60 pound calf to become 600 pound cow. And this hormone is really not recognized by a human body. What's a good substitute for milk? Like almond milk. You soak the almonds overnight and you blend it and you use like a cheesecloth and you make your own milk. Um, I'll buy it from the store. Well, anything that's, that's, stay away from anything that's boxed in straight lines and manufactured by humans because they're going to put some uh, preservatives or chemicals in it to keep it, you know, make it tasty or whatever that is. Uh, it's better, always better if you make your own or stay away from it. What would you drink milk for? Because you I eat like cereals, it. cereals are not good for you. So stay away from milk. <laughs> Plain and simple. I don't drink milk. I don't do cereal and milk anymore because of the effects it has in my body. I can feel mucus right away. I get very mucusy. I feel a lot of obstruction. Obstruction. So I just stop. And I'm a huge milk lover. I used to see the commercials as a kid and I walk straight to the refrigerator and take a gallon. Of milk. <laughs> that eliminates ice cream. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can make your own ice cream. Mm -hmm. You take a banana. I'm going to keep oh, going I because we're filming. You take a banana, yes, you peel it off, you wrap it in a plastic film tight, and you put it in the freezer. The next day it's hard. You take the film off, of course, cut it in cubes, and put it in the blender. Add some cinnamon or some fresh lemon in it, you get the best ice cream ever. Mm -hmm. I have that, um, that machine that you put the fruit in. Yes, wonderful. Uh, going back to water, my friends. Water that comes out of tap has been treated. Um, okay, let's put it this way. You flush, you see the thing going down, right? Mm -hmm. Guess where it's going? It's going back to the sink. Very clean and simple. I, I can't make it faster. It's actually as fast as that. <laughs> because we're adding 300,000 people on Earth every day. So I'm talking about maybe a million born and 700 passing. So 300 adding every day on Earth. That means more population, more pollution. The faster they have to uh, purify this water from flush to faucet. And the water comes out, the FDA says it's okay to have certain substances like, uh, you know, pieces of materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do? You know, in the, in the hospitals, I'm not talking just about the stuff that flushed down, but in hospitals, when things go out of, you know, what do you think they do? All the pills, all that stuff, they put in the in the, and they flush it down. Yeah. So we actually consuming, um, a ch child, how you call it? Those pills child, to. Uh, but they, it's worse than that because. Yes, you can imagine the stuff that's in there, you and you know the the water treatment company, uh, they don't purify all the way. You know they use filters. A filter just collects big parts. All the small parts still go through, just like an air conditioning filter. The air conditioning filter is not to protect your lungs, it's to protect the machine. And that's why you have to change it every three months because it's clogged up with those big parts. It's the small parts, the lead, all that stuff, that, that those volatile organic compounds that goes into your lungs and creates asthma, the more they build that pass through the filters. It's the same thing with water. Filters don't work. Forget about water filters. What you want to do is purification. That's a big difference between filtration and purification. Just think of like a, a light for insects that you put outdoors in your, in your house. You know, like those contact lights. The insect goes, they contact and they die, right? Yeah. <laughs> so imagine this is filter. A purifier would be like a laser beam that goes out and, and shoot out all the insect within like a mile range. That's purification. I'm sorry to give you this image of, it's sad to talk about it this way, but it's better for you to understand how it works. When you purify water, actually adding something too, because you look at all the knowledge for the ancient civilization, especially the Japanese, they all say you want to add something to create something new. You don't subtract it. So 
what's the best purification system? People use reverse osmosis, right? Which is a purification process. It's not really a purification uh, using out of nature. So what you do is just get rid of, of contaminants, toxins, and chemicals out of the water. But at the end, you still have water goes through pipes, and you still have a water that is dead because the water is is this didn't go through the vortex mechanism, and it's it's dead. It's Wait, thick. Once, once water is dead, can you give it life again? Yeah, Five. very simple. Let me explain to you what is dead water real quick. Uh, just like blood. You know the uh, blood cells? When they are full of energy and vibration, especially a cell, for example, and that's actually going to be the, uh, the third scale, which is the human voltage emotion scale. So above the line, a normal cell resonates at minus 25 millivolts. Why minus? You have probably heard of negative ions. The negative ions are good for you. You know, you go by the, uh, at the beach, you feel so good. Why? Because the wave crushing into the shore creates negative ions. And what is very simple? Um, would you like to know? OK, very, very interesting. Um, this is a pool. You jump in the pool flat. What's going to happen? You hurt yourself. Ouch, right? Because you actually plant yourself flat into the water. What is water? Why does it hurt? We should just fall in, right? You see those speed boats? They actually crash and they totally pulverize in pieces. Why? Because between water and the air, so this is the air, this is the water, there's a, there's a film there called surface tension. You see those insects actually walking on it. That surface, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You can't really see it, so thin. This surface tension actually has been recognized by uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack, who studied about this, and he calls it easy exclusion zone. We call it liquid crystal. Because that's what the light, the sunlight, is going to and recognize and actually distribute, transfer the current information or energy in formation of the sun, of the light, into the water. The water carries that pattern, that current information through all of ourselves. So when the water crushes into the shore, it creates bubbles effect. You know the bubbles? And then those bubbles pop. Then this negative, this is by the way negative ion charge. This is negatively charged liquid crystal because water is neutral and the air is positively charged. So the release of the popping bubbles actually release those negative ions into the air. We absorb that. And this is very good for us because we are living creatures from the earth. Just like plants and animals, we actually connect and ground ourselves to the earth, which is overall. This is water, right? But the Earth is negatively charged. And why is it so negatively charged? Because when water falls down from clouds, a water drop spins around itself with this exclusion zone around it that charges the water to negatively charge. So when the water falls down into the Earth, thanks to the worms, who actually creates tunnels deep down to the soil, the water travels deep down to rejuvenate the soil and the earth so it can convert into a life force energy soil. So all the plants and animals and all living beings, anything that's living on the surface of the earth is actually comes from the earth, right? That is nourished by the earth, not by laboratories. So stay away from anything that's boxed into straight lines. Very simple. Stay connected to nature. In the flow of the spin and the law of curves, stay away from straight lines. It's very simple if you want to have some health. You know. okay. How do we get water then? Okay, very simple. But you understand that, right? I do. So negative ion charge <laughs> is the same thing with waterfalls. Think about waterfalls. All this waterfall down bubble effect, negative ion released. Okay, that's why it's important also to walk barefoot into the earth. So we can actually ground ourselves and absorb those electro electrolyte negative ion charge. The body needs that. We are negatively charged bodies. When you actually absorb a toxin or even the air, which is oxidizing, that's how we start to grow old and, and recycle ourselves. 
Once you lose vitality, that's when the earth senses it and starts to recycle you. So you become crippled and you go down. 